welcome to the 50th anniversary of our beloved Nita. My name is Anita Royal and I've been teaching with Nita for 25 years. And my name is Rich Schoenberger and I also have been a faculty member for the past 25 years and loved every minute of it. And I can't believe that Nita's 50 years old and I'm really looking forward to this afternoon. What, what, are, we, what are we gonna look forward to? This is gonna be a fabulous afternoon, Rich. Um, we're gonna have some of our best and brightest, our shining stars. We're gonna have a fabulous keynote address. And then we're gonna also have the Lifetime Achievement Award presented later on this afternoon. Terrific, why don't we, uh, why don't we get her going? Let's go. 50 years ago, a group of friends sat around a kitchen table and dreamed up a method of training lawyers as advocates. Unlike most dreamers though, they put their dreams into action, creating something 50 years ago that's still thriving today. Nita is an international network of people profoundly dedicated to this profession and to teaching the next generation of lawyers. We continue teaching and innovating to address the changes in the legal practice while remaining committed to the original foundation, practical in-person training that gives participants real-time advocacy practice without incurring real client risks. After all these years, NIDA still means putting people at the center, our lawyer participants and the clients they represent to ensure fair and impartial representation for all. We are bigger than just training trial and deposition skills. We are part of the bigger conversation about what it means to be a lawyer and contributor to the legal community and how this community helps justice prevail. It's the collective nature of 50 years, one faculty at a time, one participant at a time, holding each other to higher and higher standards. Nita has been raising the bar for 50 years and we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. I'd say that's pretty darn inspiring. Nita changed my life. Nita changed my life. I first heard about Nita and the three week program in Boulder when I was a baby assistant US attorney. And I was so looking forward to going and spending those three weeks in Boulder. But then the Chicago Regional started and the US attorney didn't wanna pay for me to go to Boulder. I never got to see those Boulder skies and I took the regional where I live. But that program in Chicago opened the world of advocacy to me in a whole new way. I found myself as a trial lawyer. I thought I could just imitate our instructors, those great trial lawyers like Patty Bob and Lorna Probst and Ed Stein and Jim Jeans and that that was the key. But I soon realized it was the techniques that were shared, the demonstrations, the talks, but most importantly, the learning by doing, learning by doing that I had to adapt those techniques and those suggestions to my own style and to practice, practice, practice out loud. The advice that Jean Pincham gave was to practice to my spouse. And so my husband heard every opening and every closing argument I ever gave in court. Those were the keys to being the best trial lawyer I could be. Nita helped unlock that key so that I could be the best that I could be. Nita changed my life. At the final reception, I went up to Jim Seconder, one of the instructors, and I said, well, maybe one day, Jim, maybe when I've tried enough cases, I could teach Nita. Of course, I had a master's in education. I had taught in the inner city public schools of Detroit. And so I thought it's something I might be able to do. Well, lo and behold, the next year, Jim called me and asked me to be his assistant team leader in Boulder. I said, yes. Then Jim McElhaney asked me, and then I was in the NIDA faculty family for many, many years. And I taught as an adjunct professor with Tom Garrity, Steve Lubet, and Bob Burns, trial advocacy, teaching in regionals and national programs. I actually learned more each time I taught than what I actually taught. 
And Nita believed in me all through those years. And it was critical when my name came up as a federal judge for the US District Court for the Northern District of Illinois. I'd had 25 jury trials and I'd argued before the Court of Appeals, but only on the criminal side. And after all, I was only 35. I only had 10 years of practice. But many outstanding trial judges and trial lawyers who had seen me in action in Nita vouched for me stood up for me, for my ability to try civil cases, my ability to understand the rules of evidence, and my ability to understand what happened in a courtroom. And I do believe that I would not have made it to the federal bench without the support of my NIDA family, my NIDA colleagues. Eventually, I joined the NIDA board, 25 years, half the time that NIDA has been in existence, I am still on the board and I have continued to see how the NIDA method works and how it has changed the lives of so many lawyers and judges, not only in the US, but, but also around the world and particularly in Africa, where NIDA has partnered with Lawyers Without Borders, the State Department, African judiciaries, public defenders, prosecutors, not-for-profits, women's groups, other organizations, NIDA helping to transform justice, transform advocacy in those countries so lawyers could represent the voiceless and those whose voices needed to be heard. Always sending pro bono lawyers and judges to these countries to teach and train through our international public service initiative. We've trained over the course of the years, more than 1500 judges and lawyers, NIDA partnering with organizations on the ground and other not-for-profits, NIDA changing lives. Those lawyers need a train changing the lives of everyone they represent. NIDA, the NIDA family spans my entire professional lifetime and the friendships, especially for a judge like me, because judges are somewhat isolated from their peers, my Nita family holds some of my nearest and dearest brothers and sisters of the heart. I'm so happy that Nita has reached this 50th anniversary. May Nita continue to change lives, continue to make a difference, continue to train advocates to represent those in need. Happy birthday, Nita. I feel so blessed that I'm part of the Nita family. From Legal Services Corporation, congratulations to Nita on your 50th anniversary, and thank you for helping to train America's legal aid lawyers. Nida. For years, Nita has done something better than every other organization trying to teach trial advocacy. And the thing that they've done so well and that they continue to do so well is they've leveled the playing field. It makes no difference who you are, where you're from, what your background is. It makes no difference what race, religion, creed, color, sexual orientation, you're all treated the same at Nita and we will always treat you the same. But you bring to Nita something that is tremendous, something that we, that we have and we hope we never let go of, and it's your life experience. Because the goal at Nita has been something that has been singular. And I can tell you, the singular goal, the goal that matters for everyone, is to become the very best advocate that you can be. And when you bring all of the experience from your walks of life, from your personal experience, your legal experience, it makes no difference where you went to law school. It makes no difference what field of law you practice in, whether you're a corporate lawyer or a commercial lawyer, a transactional lawyer, whether you work in public service as a legal aid lawyer or an assistant district attorney. When you step into one of our classrooms, the playing field is leveled. And what I mean by that is everyone is treated the same, but we learn so much from you as you do from us. When you walk into courtroom, I've, I've heard judges say point blank, we know who's needed trained. We know who actually participated. 
in classes at the National Institute for Trial Advocacy. And that should speak volumes to you because we have leveled the playing field. We've made it a one purpose shop. And that one purpose is to make you the very best lawyer that you can ever be. And that's something that we guarantee. So for those people that I have taught with, those people who have become my closest friends in life, I thank them. And I thank you for participating in this as well. The 50th anniversary at NIDA is something that we treasure. And I could say this, it's not just the next 50 years that are gonna be good, but I like to think bigger than that. And although I might not be around for the next 100 years, I can say this, the advocacy skills that we have taught, that we help you to learn and eventually teach yourselves is something that we will never let go of. You will become better advocates. And it's because of this level playing field that I can say, honestly, the National Institute for Trial Advocacy will continue to make a difference in your life and the lives of your clients. And so I say this, congratulations, Nita, on the 50th anniversary. It's been a wild ride and we hope to continue. Thank you all and congratulations. Happy birthday, Nita. I can't believe you're 50. The Kansas Bar Foundation appreciates all that you do. Happy anniversary, Nita, from all of us from Lagos, Nigeria. Well, I am very excited about what's uh, to come. We are going to hear from our keynote speaker who's gonna spend a little bit of time uh, talking about the rule of law and advocacy and the importance of both. And Anita's gonna tell you all about this very exciting uh, individual. Our keynote speaker is a 1984 graduate of Harvard School of Law. In 1990, she joined the prestigious United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York. She made a stellar career as a serious advocate, ethical prosecutor, and in 1999, President Bill Clinton appointed her as the interim United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York. In 2010, President Obama invited her back into the office to provide leadership for some very complex international and domestic cases in which the office was trying. In 2014, President Obama nominated her to be the United States Attorney. It is our great honor and pleasure to welcome my shero, the Honorable Loretta E. Lynch. Hello. Thank you so much for that warm introduction. And thanks to all of you for coming together this afternoon at a time when real connection is still so frustratingly out of reach for so many of us, the connections that we choose to make at this difficult time are truly meaningful. And I have to tell you that this means the world to me. I'm also so honored to be with you as you celebrate the 50th anniversary of the National Institute for Trial Advocacy. Anniversaries are important. They give us an opportunity to pause and reflect on years of growth and change, but they also give us an important opportunity to reconnect with our core principles and a time to take a few seconds out and recharge for the challenges ahead. And there are challenges ahead. But I am particularly honored this afternoon because Nita has been such a consistent presence in my own career. I recall more years ago than I like to remember, being a young AUSA, teaching trial advocacy for the Department of Justice. And this was so long ago that we still taught in Washington rather than at the center in South Carolina. But I remember going to my first train the trainer session and learning the NIDA method. NIDA has been with me as I've taught trial advocacy from the halls of the Department of Justice to the classrooms at St. John's University School of Law in New York, to the corridors of the United Nations Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, where I was privileged beyond belief to teach alongside the late Joanne Harris. And it was also my privilege to serve on the board of directors of NIDA, along with Joanne and such luminaries as Jim Ferguson. Through your work, uplifting the fundamentals of advocacy and presentation You've been instrumental in upholding the highest standards of this great profession of ours. And through your commitment to working with the public sector, you've honored and uplifted all aspects of our profession, 
And for that, I thank you. For 50 years, Nita has created strong lawyers and principled advocates so that regardless of which side of the V one is on, whatever the idea proposed or defended, the important debate and the ultimate resolution can be hard fought, fairly won, and always, always grounded in the truth. And now more than ever, we need strong lawyers, principled advocates to help us move through the challenges of today. We need the advocates commitment to reasoned debate and the exploration of ideas as a pathway to the truth. And we need this now as the very concept of truth is under assault. Now we may have thought that our challenges were over with this last turn of the electoral wheel just within the past year. But this was always about more than just one man. This was always about all of us. We are the ones being tested even now. And these are indeed challenging times. Our faith in our institutions, our procedures, in the story of what makes us America is being tested. But we must never forget that our greatest progress has often come after our greatest trials and tribulations. And we must also remember, as we deal with the trials and tribulations of this day, that this has never been easy. The path to justice and equality in this country has always had twists and turns and sometimes outright reversals. But we have pushed ever onward. And with every challenge, we get a little bit closer to our ideals. And at every turn, when these struggles have threatened to tear us apart, as we see today, we turn to the law to reconnect ourselves with our highest principles. We turn to the law to give voice to those fighting oppression. We turn to the law to give hope to those seeking the redress of wrongs. We turn to the law to protect the weak from the strong and to give true meaning to the cry of never again. These are our values. These are our beliefs. And when we hold on to them, we do great things. And what we've learned from these challenges is the lesson for us today. It's not that our values are not true and good, but that every generation must commit to them and work to make them real for the challenges of their own time. We've learned that the price of freedom is constant vigilance we've learned that it's our turn. And indeed, in the challenge to protect our institutions and uphold our values, the challenge of our times, those of us devoted to the law are uniquely suited to this challenge. And that's because the lifeblood of the law embraced by all great lawyers is first and foremost, a quest for the truth. Also a breadth of perspective and most importantly, a commitment to justice. And when we deploy these in the service of our democracy and the institutions that uphold it, great things happen. And it is this training, these skills, and above all, this commitment that is needed today in our fractious and increasingly divisive national debate. Great lawyers follow the facts. They do not let dogma blind them to proof and they seek the most reliable and unbiased evidence to support their case. As the old saying goes, you're entitled to your own opinion, but not your own facts. Writing about his life in the law, no less a personage than Gandhi said, facts mean truth. And once we adhere to truth, the law comes to our aid naturally. Great lawyers maintain a breadth of perspective that allows them to see both sides of an issue. No lawyer has ever been well served by considering only one point of view. One must consider not just one's opponent's arguments, but also their motivations. One must ascertain the weakness in not just their opponent's case, but also their own. Great lawyers take all this in and they begin to think in a different way. They become less enamored of their own beliefs and more likely to appreciate arguments with which they disagree and to hear the fears and concerns behind those arguments. 
And it is the power to truly hear another's fears and concerns that conveys the power to understand. And with the power to understand, we gain the power to find common ground. And with the power to find common ground, we gain the power to reach accord, to find the common truths that benefit us all. Finally, great lawyers bring a devotion to justice and equality to public debate. How do we advance the cause of equality, the defining ideal of our nation, in the face of those who see it as something that can be cabined off and, and denied? to those with whom one disagrees or whom one does not understand. How do we find justice in such a world? We turn to the law, using the example of history and the template of the constitution to guide us. We use our skills to uplift the truth, to expose the hypocrisy and generate a true marketplace of ideas. Indeed, all of the advances that we have made towards the more perfect union of the founders' dreams have come about when we have faced the hard truths and the realities of our world and pushed forward to improve it. Every group fighting for equality has used the law to open up our society for the benefit of all. So when we see the law itself being twisted in order to narrow opportunity or foster division and advance self-interest, we have a responsibility to counteract that backward slide. It is the lawyer's responsibility to continue the search for truth amid the sound and fury of modern day diversions and disillusionment. It is the lawyer's obligation to bring the truth forward even when people want to ignore it. And it is the lawyer's privilege to stand for our highest ideals and in support of our most important institutions again, for the benefit of all. For 50 years, Nita has stood at the forefront of the quest for truth, harnessing the deep and abundant generosity of our profession, you have called upon the best to train the brightest. In the battle to uplift the truth, you are preparing the warriors for the field. And now, as we wait for this hopefully last winter of our discontent, to be made glorious summer, I thank you again for all the work that you have done. And I thank you even more for the work that I know you will carry on to arm the next generation of lawyers with the tools to preserve our standards, our profession, and above all, to uplift the truth. Thank you for letting me spend a few minutes with you in this wonderful celebration. Congratulations on the last 50 years. I cannot wait to see what the next 50 will bring. Thank you so very much. Hello, I'm Bill Whitehurst, president of the International Academy of Trial Lawyers Foundation. I send greetings from the mountains of Telluride, Colorado, where we are preparing for our first in-person trustees meeting in over two years. We're pleased to wish Nita a happy 50th anniversary. We have been a proud supporter of NIDA for decades. The IETL Foundation focuses on providing grant funds to improve the rule of law and administration of justice. NIDA's mentorship and trial advocacy courses certainly serve this mission. We are very grateful for NIDA's ongoing success and its highly regarded contribution to the legal community at large. Thank you and happy anniversary. Happy 50th birthday, Nita. As a Nita faculty member, and as the Associate Dean of Experiential Education at one of the country's most diverse law schools, I get the most excited about the role that Nita plays in the law school curriculum. If you want attorneys to have a sound foundation and advocacy training, Nita's in law school. If you want attorneys to understand the power and the strength 
of effective communication and advocacy, need is in law school. If you want attorneys to have at their experience the opportunity to understand the nuances that make the difference between a good lawyer, a great lawyer, and an excellent lawyer, you have NIDA in law schools. From the creation of experiential curricula, like how to interview clients for law students, to case files that are complete with exhibits and statutes, witness statements, depositions that support advocacy skill training like trial simulation and trial advocacy, to case files that delve in deep to hot topics, right? Th those topics that really serve as the turning points for who we are as a country, like social justice, civil rights, Title IX. That's NIDA in law schools. But they don't stop there. NIDA goes so far as to show their commitment to legal education by actually partnering with law schools to co-host some of NIDA's best attendant trial advocacy programs and deposition skill programs. From law school training to career long support, NIDA is the gold standard in advocacy training. 50 years of making public interest lawyers better. To me, that is what the National Institute for Trial Advocacy is all about. NIDA has made it possible for so many lawyers who have dedicated their entire careers to serving in the public interest, made it possible for them to receive excellent training from the very best trial lawyers across the country. And that's the reason it's so special to me. I believe that your justice is only as good as your lawyer. And so your lawyer has to be great if you're pursuing justice for those who have been denied access to it in so many different ways. We have trained lawyers advocating for orders of protection against domestic violence abusers, for lawyers defending those accused, for lawyers prosecuting those who the community needs protection from. We have helped train lawyers who help people keep their homes, keep their children, protect their families, and save whatever things they actually can save under difficult circumstances and from small claims courts to very big federal trials. NIDA makes it possible for those who want to give voice to sometimes those who are voiceless to be able to do it better, to be able to do it in the best way they can. I have personally listened to people in programs, lawyers who have gotten the benefit of some of the best teachers I know in the country say that they've changed themselves as lawyers and they're better because of what they've learned. And maybe with that, they've not only been able to save people, but maybe save people's lives. I am so proud to be connected to Nita for every single one of the 25 years I've had the pleasure of being one small part of this great big collection of people donating their very best time and their very best talent to make sure access to justice is for everyone. Happy birthday, Nita. Working the front lines, public service lawyers are committed to helping the less fortunate or underrepresented have a voice. Lawyers who choose a career in public service often face financial hardships themselves. And without scholarship assistance, the advocacy training their work demands would be out of reach. The NIDA Foundation was created to help public service lawyers refine their advocacy skills through scholarships dedicated for training. To mark our 50th anniversary, we are going big with our $2 million endowed scholarship initiative so we can continue to provide quality advocacy training to public service lawyers in perpetuity. We need your help in this great effort. As NIDA embarks on its second 50 years, let's partner to make advocacy training available to public service lawyers so they, in turn, can help lift their communities through the work they do. Giving to this endowment is more than a donation. It is about making a lasting impact that reverberates beyond any single lawyer and into the communities they serve. Donate now on our website at www.nita.org. I personally have made some of my best friendships through my association with NIDA. 
So happy birthday. Congratulations on the green glens of Antrim. Where are the green glens of Antrim? I had a client who um, had been sending threatening letters to somebody that she was quite fond of. Um, and the letters had kind of a, she had a kind of a witchcraft background. So they had pretty distinctive language in them. And the state moved to revoke her bond. Um, and they had text messages from a burner phone that they were trying to use to show that she had violated her bond. So I was objecting to those because there was no evidence that she was the sender of those text messages. Now, in the middle of it all, she shouted out, I sent them. And so my argument kind of fell flat. But I suspect... Greetings, I'm Don Beskind, and I'm here on behalf of the International Society of Barristers to wish Nita a very happy 50th anniversary. Uh, the barristers are proud to have been one of the original organizations that started supporting Nita at its beginnings and have continued to support them to this day. Happy anniversary, all. First of all, happy 50th birthday, Nita. Uh, this has a, been a long, strange, and wonderful trip, both for my own self and my 25 plus years experience in teaching NIDA programs, as well as the, the path of the lawyers who've interacted in NIDA in a variety of ways. One of the things I like to think about is what is it that we're adding to the profession? How is it that we're enriching those people who appear before the courts and in conference rooms for depositions throughout the land? And, and to me, I think there are a couple of things that stand out. Number one, I have a strong sense when I encounter someone who has been NIDA trained. They are people who are very expressive because we focus a lot about presentation skills. So when you see them in court, they don't do dry presentations. They are people who are more mindful of both their physicality, their voice, and their body as an instrument. And they are more effective in utilizing all of those tools to come across and to advocate for their clients in an extraordinarily compelling way. They're also more organized. And what do I mean by that? Before people take NIDA programs, they tend to kind of meander through their examinations and their opening statements and closing arguments. And after they've done a NIDA program, they're more mindful of the power of a head note and providing signposts for the listener about what it is they're going to tell them what they've told them and why they should rule in favor of their client. And I think that Nita does a wonderful job in preparing people to be a little bit more, in fact, quite a bit more, uh, very kind of compelling, organized, and passionate in their presentations. But another hallmark of a Nita trained lawyer is their ethical responsibility. Obviously, in law schools, we teach ethics as practitioners. We have ethical CLE requirements. But when you do a NIDA course and cover the ethics of witness prep, you end up having discussions about issues that you encounter, but never really discuss the ethical issues in a practical way. Whereas in a NIDA program, you have that ethics of witness prep, you discuss the practicality of how do you do it right and do it ethically. And it comes across in the people who appear before courts and across the land. And so, as I said, happy birthday, Nita, and congratulations for all that everyone does in training people to be effective trial lawyers and ethical practitioners. My name is Ariana Goodman, and I'm an attorney at Bell Nunley & Martin in Dallas, Texas. I practice white collar criminal defense. I attended the Nita National Session in 2017 as a third year attorney. Since then, I've tried a number of federal cases, all second chairing them as an associate. And I attribute my skill set and my confidence to what I learned that week at NIDA. 
I think as young attorneys, young associates, it's difficult to get the bigger roles, the active roles in trial. So I think you have to do something and have a skill set that sets you apart. And I think that's what I gained at NIDA. And since then, I actually still go back and look at the recordings of the sessions I made during that week just to see where I was then and where I am now. And I actually also keep my Federal Rules of Evidence book and my trial advocacy book with me. And I use these in every single trial that I have. So to ask me how Nita has helped my work since attending the national session, I honestly think it helps me every single day be a better advocate. Happy birthday, Nita. You don't look a day past 30, but you put on the programming and have the knowledge of an organization twice your age. Here's to 50 years more. Hi, I'm Mike Ginsberg, a member of the Board of Trustees of Nita and the president of the Nita Foundation. I'm thrilled to be part of Nita's 50th anniversary celebration. The Nita Foundation supports Nita's activities, their public service activities and scholarship activities. When I say scholarships, I'm referring to the $150,000 a year that the NIDA Foundation provides for scholarships for public interest lawyers to attend NIDA public programs. By public service programs, I'm referring to the close to $300,000 a year the NIDA Foundation provides for public service programs, public interest programs, and international rule of law programs. We want to continue the public service efforts that NIDA has by making sure we never have to turn away a scholarship applicant. To do that, we're trying to raise $2 million for an endowed scholarship fund called the 50th Anniversary Scholarship Fund. With your contribution, we can be sure that no scholarship applicant will be turned away during the next 50 years of NIDA's activities. Thank you for your consideration and let's all toast NIDA's 50th anniversary and the next 50 years. So many heroes, so many cherished memories. So rich, but you know, none of this is possible without our visionary board of directors, our phenomenal faculty, and our amazing staff. Together, we all collectively make the magic that we make so that we are the global leaders of excellence and advocacy, and we ensure that so many communities throughout the world have access to justice. And oh my goodness, staff, you are our glue. You keep your eyes on the ball for 50 years, working smarter, working harder, being creative. Without you, none of this is possible. So on behalf of Nita, Rich and I would like to thank you immensely and bless you for all of your hard work, your vision, your competence, your commitment to Nita's vision. And of course, we wanna spend another 50 years together. So thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. Thanks, Anita. Uh, the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award for Nita is none other than Jim Brosnahan. Jim is kind, empathetic, uh, and an amazing teacher who never takes himself too seriously, although given all he's accomplished, he certainly could. Uh, I, I'm a huge San Francisco Giants fan, and when Barry Bonds was 
coming to bat at our home stadium. It didn't matter how hungry or thirsty you were. Nobody ever left their seats until his at bat was over. They didn't want to miss something. Uh, they didn't want to miss something great. And that's what it's like when Jim does a demo on rhetoric or closing arguments or jury selection. You don't want to miss it. He's that great. And here to talk more about him is John Baker. James J. Brosnahan, NETA Lifetime Achievement Award. Wow, those two things go together, don't they? Most lawyers remember Jim Brosnahan for a couple of things. Probably his representation of the American Taliban, John Walker Lind, or the Irish Republican Mar Army member, Kevin Barry Art. Or they remember him as a fantastic trial advocacy teacher at NIDA, at law school, and other lawyer organizations are around the country. But don't stop there. Jim is much, much more than that to Nita and to the profession. First, Jim is the very definition of a trial lawyer. I've heard him tell stories uh, right out of law school. He would go to a job interview, and the senior partner would sit there and say, and we will give you a pension and profit sharing plan, and we're going to pay you a, a billion dollars. And Jim would say, yeah, but do you go to trial? <laughs> he always asked, but do you go to trial? He has been going to trial for the, over the last uh, 50 years, more than 50 years ever since. So obviously they said yes. Second, he has a very strong belief in the legal system and in the constitutional rights covered by that legal system. Most of you have seen him with a pocket, uh, in his pocket, a tattered, uh, dog-eared copy of the US Constitution, kind of like this. Uh, I can't get this in my pocket, but he always has it. And believe it or not, I've seen many lectures where he actually brings it out and talks about it. More importantly, he is an advocate for the rights that are covered under the United States Constitution. And finally, the third thing is, and I hope most of you know this, he is a real genuine human being with a deadly sense of humor. And if you've ever listened to him tell his stories, he's a wonderful storyteller. So Jim, for your lifetime of work in the profession and for NIDA, it is my honor on behalf of NIDA to present you with the NIDA Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations, Jim. John, thank you so much. What a treat it is to see you and through through you to talk to other, the other teachers at NIDA present and uh, with fondest of memories, the ones that I've taught with in the past going all the way back to the first year where we had no materials. I didn't, I was quite vague on what we were going to do. And so we made my daughter, Amy, who is, uh, is now 60, we, she was 13. We made her into a uh, witness in a bank robbery case and everybody examined her on the spot. But from that day, and Bob Keaton was there and Bob Keaton kept us an extra half day to talk about how we're gonna do this thing, how we're gonna teach Nita, how can we make it better? And that spirit has come all the way through to the, the present administration of Nita, always trying to improve. As for myself, I have taught NIDA at least one week uh, every, every year since that first year because I became a NIDA addicted person. It's better than drugs. Uh, it's better than a lot of other bad things that you could do. Gotta, gotta teach NIDA. And I did it over the years with uh, people, too many to name, some of whom are no longer with us but who I was uh, struck by not only their abilities as a trial lawyer, but their desire to teach others 
to do this. It was like the 15th century guilds where you pass on your talents. And this is the way, and we kept adding things to it. And uh, not that long ago, maybe 20 years ago, I started adding voice because I really believe it's terribly important. And I studied, I read books and did one-on-one -on -one, uh, voice training and found out pretty much that with a couple of exceptions that Nita knows about, most law schools don't teach voice. So there were things like that. I give that as an example. Uh, on one occasion, I tried the advance down in Florida, got on a plane on a Saturday afternoon, started a jury trial in Fresno on Monday. And I have to tell you, boy, did I ask short leading questions in Fresno. <laughs> I mean, it was a perfect way to warm up for a trial. Uh, I've been spoiled by doing what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to be a trial lawyer, and I was for almost 60 years. And uh, I believe in the process. I believe in the judges. I believe in the system. I believe in the intelligence of the juries. And I appreciate that the number of trials has gone down drastically. But uh, I look forward to perhaps a rejuvenation of the jury system as our social issues become such that they have to be litigated in public. And when that happens, some very good things come out of that, reforms come out of it. So I have been spoiled uh, by my firm, Morrison and Forrester in San Francisco, who uh, understood me well enough to give me uh, indulgence on sometimes when I would go off. Uh, I'm asked sometimes, well, what are you, what are you proud of? And th there's, there's things that I can name, but the personal thing I leave you with, John, is the creation of a NIDA program in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And I made six visits to Northern Ireland uh, some of them during the Troubles. I investigated three different murders in Northern Ireland. And the fact that I was allowed to do those kind of things in the law means a great deal to me. This uh, magnificent <laughs> gift, uh, my wife was very impressed by the way. We've been married 62 years and this really impressed her uh, when it came. I thank Nita, I thank the staff of Nita every one of them now and in the past, all the faculty. It's an extraordinary collection of devoted people, devoted to teaching others, which is one of the great things about NIDA. So thank you, John, so much. I really deeply appreciate this award. Thank you. Happy birthday, Nita, from Tony Cahar, Belfast, Northern Ireland, one of the founder members of the Advocacy Working Party here. We had 22 years of bringing all the tutors over from America, and in fact, we were privileged to be invited once or twice to your great country. You saw us through our dark times, and it many, many thanks from the committee, Working Party, the Law Society of Northern Ireland, and the hundreds of people that you have put through the course here. Thanks for everything. I want to begin by congratulating Nita on the 50th anniversary of this incredible organization that continues every day to create the kinds of trial lawyers who get out there and change the world, who are client centric, who are caring, who are ethical, who are really quite extraordinary. And this is because of Nita, its dedication and its teaching methods that are completely foolproof. So I'm gonna focus quickly on two different areas. One question is why the materials, the case files that all of us use as faculty around the country, why they're so incredible in teaching trial advocacy. So I can tell you generally that advocacy professors everywhere use me to case files because they are so evenly balanced because they cultivate an ability to 
use evidence to figure out evidentiary bumps in the road. They have enough um, contradictory testimony to cultivate cross-examinations to learn how to do great storytelling. I'll tell you personally, as a law teacher in three different law schools, using these case files has helped me to train law students to become exceptional trial lawyers who I am so proud of. And what's equally interesting, or I think it kind of, it's fabulous, is we all as faculty who teach internationally use NIDA's case files as well in China, helping to promote rule of law, which is very interesting, in Chile, in Russia, in Africa, in all these different countries, uh, as part of our law school jobs, using NIDA materials, NIDA case files, helps not just train lawyers here, but helps train these trial lawyers throughout the world to do, uh, to do good things and be incredibly client-centered. The other area I wanted to touch on quickly is why it's such incredible added value to have faculty members at law schools be NIDA trained. I think it's, it's not only essential, it, it is a bottom line requirement. If I'm hiring, I am never going to hire a trial advocacy professor who is not NIDA trained. And the reasons are, are obvious. I mean, in my own experience at three different law schools, I work with so many different trial advocacy teachers who were NIDA trained, who use the NIDA method of teaching and their ability to communicate this experiential and simulation-based learning to our students. Uh, there's just nothing like it. And the students grab onto it and learn and become excellent, excellent advocates. So excellence in teaching, um, reputation building. Our deans love when our faculty are needed trained because the world sees how good the lawyers that all these faculty produce and they get out and they do good. Uh, employment is up when it's needed trained. Um, faculty teaching our students to become great lawyers and the students who are trained by NIDA faculty who are now law school faculty, they get out there and they slowly change the world as superb trial lawyers and client-centered litigators. So bottom line, I owe everything to NIDA professionally. And personally, I've made so many fabulous, great friends. I can't imagine my life as a lawyer, as a trial lawyer, and as a teacher without Nita. So from the bottom of my heart, congratulations. 50 years now, at least 150 more years to come. I, I wanna end by not just saying how extraordinary it's been being a part of Nita in my extended family, but a huge shout out to Wendy. Uh, Wendy, you are our spiritual, our literal, our everything guide, and you have just done wonders for this organization. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts. Oh, wow, Rich, this has been such an amazing afternoon. It's been great. I mean, I think about Nita, we started with just a few, and now we are not just a few, we're many, and not only uh, in members, but also in talent and creativity. And congratulations to Nita for all your efforts and accomplishments. And obviously deserve a big round of applause for all the hard work and unconditional dedication. And I know I speak for you, Anita, when I say we are so grateful to have been part of this journey and, and hope to be for, for a while to come, huh? I feel exactly the same way. This has truly been my life's passion. So Rich, you think we're gonna be here in another 50 years? Well, if I, uh, I suppose if I have a night nurse and uh, a team of uh, doctors, maybe, I uh, hope so. Uh, but I know it's gonna be great for whoever is and, and we're really so grateful and let's raise a glass. Congratulations, Nita, for 50 years of fabulousness. To Nita. Happy 50th, Nita!